All right, looks like that one recorded as well. Hey, how's it going? Thank you. <laughs> Bananas and corn and strawberries and um, rotisserie chicken. What a weird combination. So, uh, yeah, just this is just another example of the same general thing. Actually, I think this was a bad example. Um, so you can see I've got those medevacs are full of troops. You asked in an email recently whether uh, when I get fungal growth as from a medevac, whether I just drop my marines or what I do about it. And this is another good example. Uh, in order to reduce the possibility of AoE, you always want to reduce the number of troops you're presenting him as targets for AoE. So loading a bunch of dudes into medevacs and then dropping them halfway through the fight after he's already thrown his fungal growth is one really good way of preventing him from, from being able to fungal. Uh, this game wasn't a very good example of reinforcements because I won that first battle. I killed his golds, and now the game's over. This game, however, was quite a good example of it because... Alright, so he's just knocked down my first attack really severely. He he came out ahead by like 2,000 minerals on that first attack. Now I'm doing a reinforcement of those marines to come and try to save my medevacs as they retreat, but then he gets a bunch of lings underneath them. So now I'm demonstrating as I retreat, I'm dropping carpet bombing from one of my medevacs to distract the mutifier so that my medevacs don't all die. And now this is the third wave of attacks that I'm coming in, losing this pretty heavily as well. But you'll notice that even though each one of these waves uh, is unsuccessful, even though I'm losing um, crap in each one of these waves, the crap that I'm losing is fighting against his same army each time. So this is, I've had like four waves of attack that have each had to fight against the same army that he threw at me a minute ago. So uh, this is another example of why constant reinforcement is awesome. Because um, if I'd taken a second between those the, the first battle and the second to... to um, go in again, then he would have uh, regrouped his troops, he would have made a bunch of larva injects. You'll see how high his money is getting. Those four battles, each one of them cost me 400 bucks. That's practically nothing. 400 bucks, who cares? Right? And yet they distracted him long enough that his minerals went all the way up to 4,000. Right? And uh, on top of that, Boom! They also forced him to be fighting with mutas, which is something he never really wanted to do. Boom! So then I came back with the next wave of troops, and this is a, a kind of large group of troops, and the only time I ever want to fight with a large group of marines is the first battle, or if, like in this case, I lose the first battle, the second battle, the third battle, and the fourth battle, and I have to regroup, I sometimes come with a larger group of troops. You'll notice that the auto-spread against those destructible rocks means that even though he got relatively good fungal growths, um, he still didn't... they weren't super efficient, the fungal growths. So the more marines you have to try to spread out, the less efficient each one of your spreads is going to end up being, and the, the better off his AoE is going to be. But you'll see on the minimap, there's like constant Congo line of reinforcement. So even though this battle went decently for him, because he gets to use uh, fungal growth versus large packed groups of marines, I eventually killed off all of the stuff on the ground. I eventually uh, killed off the hatchery. And now he's forced to take these mutas that he never ever wants to engage me directly with and fight marine medevac versus muta. And that's just a consequence of the the waves and waves of reinforcements. What's he, what he's doing, he's thinking like a zerg is used to thinking against marine tank. If I can mop up this attack, then I'll get some time to rebuild my lings and banelings and, and reposition my infestors and blah blah blah. Like he's thinking if I can only mop up this last little group, if I can only mop... But it's not this last little group, it's a constant wave of more and more troops. He's playing against me as if I was doing marine tank when I'm doing marine medevac. So you'll, you'll find this happening a lot in your games. Um, if you come back over and over and over, then Zergs will, will get it, the mentality that they're used to playing with, which is that I just need to mop this up so that I'll have some room to breathe, which isn't true at all. It's impossible to mop it up because it just keeps coming back and keeps coming back and keeps coming back. So in this game, he won the first battle really, really significantly, really heavily or whatever, by a mile. And yet, through constant re waves of reinforcement, I was eventually able to squish his face. And yet another example of the same thing. I should perhaps check that this is not going too long. Uh, it's only been four minutes, so that's okay. Oh, you see that fungal growth really kicked kicked my butt. 
Um, this is the first battle, right? In, in any game, my first battle is always the worst for me because it's the battle in which I have lots and lots of units. So there's lots and lots of room for his splash to kick me, kick me in the balls, right? So he comes with... He was prepared for a big push. He has a bunch of Banelings, he has a bunch of Infestors, he's got a small number of Mutas just to clean up the, the Ravens and the Banshees. He's got everything that he needs to mop up that first wave, and he mops up that first wave beautifully, and now he's expecting me to go home and stop fighting. Well, I don't have any tanks to wait for, there's no need for me to go home. I'm just going to keep fighting and keep coming back. So now, the, in that first wave, he had an abundance of infestors, lings, mutas, and uh, and banelings, but now it's that same army that he just beat me with has to fight against these this next group of like eight marines. So he's like, fine, I still have enough banelings left over, I'll knock those guys down. And then as soon as he knocks those guys down, look what I have, you know, four more marines coming. Fine, I'll knock those guys down. Okay, now he has no banelings at all. This first wave of reinforcing zerglings shows up, and he's like, whoa, I've got reinforcements, I'll knock you down. And it's just kind of constant constant baby constant and uh this is really easy for me to do all i'm doing is holding down the a key with my rally point set to the middle and making sure my medevacs tend to float somewhere near my marines and so this this whole wave this is right now my fifth wave of reinforcements against his first wave of reinforcements um he is reinforced once and this is the fifth time that i'm reinforcing uh, so now uh, that's all mopped up, and I'm gonna walk back again and do do some more. Again, my first battle, I had probably 60 marines, and so fungal growth was able to hit 20 marines with one fungal and all sorts of terrible things. But the the subsequent battles, none of them had more than 10 marines. Like you'll see right now, I'm pushing deep, and he's afraid of this army. And how what's the size of this army? 16, 15, 14 marines? It's tiny, but as long as it attacks often enough, tiny is good enough. Doesn't need to be huge. So again, walking on constant pressure, if he doesn't fight this army right now, he loses a hatchery. So now he's forced to fight with whatever he's got. He wanted to finish morphing those banelings, he wanted to finish getting some energy on his infestors so he could do some more fungal growths. He wanted to come with his banelings and his lings at the same time, but he was forced to come with his lings first, and then his mutas, and then his infestors, and his banelings after, because if he didn't, he would have lost the hatchery. So again, uh, he was unable to mop this up. This is just like probably one, yeah, this is one marine on the ground with a big cloud of medevacs floating overhead, and he couldn't mop it up until he reinforced with yet another wave of dudes. And now here comes the next wave of reinforcements for me. Ba blue blue. So, uh, yeah, now that, that wave of reinforcements from him, that's probably his fourth wave, and this is probably my eighth wave. And now those lings get knocked down again, and here's the auto spread by attacking the hatchery and then the whole position to knock down those lings, and splash, killing everything. So, uh, yeah, you see how doing this means that if I wanted to, I can throw down a completely naked expo up here, or a completely naked expo at the, at the 12 o'clock base, or I can send a, just three marines down to the southern base and completely wipe it out, because he's focusing all his attention on these constant waves of reinforcement. So uh, there's a cute little medevac spread, and again, uh, carpet bombing spread is something that's really easy to do when you only have 20 marines to do it with, and it's really hard to do when you're trying to get 95 marines to carpet bomb spread. So uh, attacking the southern base and the eastern base all at once is just too much, and that's the end of him. Um, yeah, I think that's enough, even though there's clearly four more examples. I'm going to go into the actual games that you played again, as well as do some PTR, not PTR, um, some test map stuff to demonstrate uh, the, the problems of having too many marines. Let's stop this and start the next one.